Hi folks, hope you're okay today. This is Jason and uh, just a few thoughts on the free offer of the gospel. I've done a sermon on election which I'll put up uh, soon and this is the other side of election uh, that God wants us to reach out to people and share his love uh, to all people and not just to the elect. Uh, so this is called the free offer of the gospel and you need to read uh, the whole of Romans chapter 10. Uh, to get the full implication of it. We haven't got time to read it all. Um, but we looked at election in chapter 9, verse 11. Chapter 9, 31, we, we now see the human side coming out. But Israel, which followed after the law of righteousness, had not attained the law of righteousness. Verse 32, where because they sought it not by faith. So God has elected people, but here the human responsibility is upon man there. And so Paul brings this issue about human responsibility. And I just want to talk about the simplicity of the gospel, which is in uh, Romans 10, 1 to 13. The proclamation of the gospel, Romans 10, 14, 15. And the challenge of the gospel, Romans 10, 16, 21. We haven't got time to go into depth, but I'll bring it uh, to your attention um, later on in, in more detail. But just briefly, uh, don't take things personally, the simplicity of the gospel. We can make the gospel complex if we get upset with people. Romans 10 verse 1, Brethren, my desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Paul has been beaten by the Jews, hit by the Jews, maligned by the Jews, yet he still loves them. And you can make the gospel complex by taking things personal and not loving people. Um, so don't take things personal. Don't get hurt when people criticize you in your own family, but continue to love them. Uh, Paul did. Uh, a, a leader is to be self-controlled, Titus chapter 1, verse 6 and 10. We're to have love, 1 John chapter 3, verse 14, and 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. Uh, it says this, and I like this verse, 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 8, verse 1. It says, now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that all we have all knowledge, knowledge puff of up, but charity edifieth. So we can have knowledge, but it can puff us up and it can make us unloving. And that can make the gospel complex if we're unloving. It complex makes the com situation more complex than it needs to be. Uh, we need to be Christ-centered. Paul was Christ-centered in Romans chapter 10. Um, we see uh, verse 3 and 4, Romans 10, 3, 4. For being ignorant of God's righteousness and God going about uh, to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. So we've got to be Christ-focused, Christ-centered. And um, we can read Philippians chapter 3, verse 1 and 9, Galatians chapter 1, 13 and 16. Paul was always Christ-centered. And you've got to make the gospel simple by focusing on Christ. Uh, you could read uh, Acts chapter 26, verse to 11, 16. Uh, Paul had an experience of Christ, and he tells the simplicity of the gospel. Number two, the proclamation of the gospel. I'll just see if we've got time on here. Yeah, we've got time, sorry. Just looking at the battery. Uh, number two, the proclamation of the gospel. Um... We need to pray. It says uh, in verse 1, Brethren, my heart's desire, pray for God, for all for Israel is that they might be saved. So we need to pray for people. And um, we need to realize that God wants, uh, has a love for everybody, that he wants the gospel to go out to everybody there. Um, we can argue about uh, what we mean by God's love. Is it electing love or whatever? But at the end of the day, here we're seeing a love for all people that we're to pray for all people. And we, we see that, uh, verse 14, it says, How then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? How shall they believe in him in whom they have not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? And some people say, well, if you believe in election, you shouldn't do an evangelism. But the Bible says here that we're to go out and sh share the gospel. That Some people say, well, if you believe in election, God doesn't love everybody. Well, it says here, uh, it says, for whosoever call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. It says, now that if thou shalt confess 
thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved so you know we've got to be careful with logic people get themselves logic's good and reasoning's good but if you know many of the great theologians Calvin Lloyd Jones John Murray people who I highly respect all say on this passage you've got to be careful when it comes to election and the free offer of the gospel to, to remember that it's a mystery and once you start with your puny logic trying to bring God down to your size you're going to get into problems Matthew 23 if you turn to Matthew 23 30 no uh, Matthew 11 yeah Matthew 23 37 Matthew 23 37 it says oh Jerusalem Jerusalem thou that killest the prophets and stonest that which was sent unto thee how often would I have gathered thy children together as a hen hath gathered her chicks under her wings and you would not so there the Lord is pleading with all the people in Jerusalem that is a love for everybody there so we have election but God has this love for everybody we see it there now I don't fully understand it but it's there in the text so just remember that we're proclaiming the gospel to all people not just the elect um, and in Matthew 28 19 which is commanded to go out to all nations number three the challenge of the gospel there are challenges um, the question is why don't we see many people coming to the Lord why don't we see many people coming to Jesus Romans 10 uh, 16 21 if we go to Romans 10 16 21 Romans 10 Romans 10 16 21 but they have not all obeyed the gospel for as I said Lord who hath believed our report so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God so Paul is addressing why aren't there so many Jews not coming to know the Lord and he's saying because they've rejected it and that's the other side of truth that people have responsibility and again you try to bring your logic in and you're going to get in a mess God has elected people but people go to hell because they have rejected the gospel so we've come to the end and what we've looked at is the simplicity of the gospel you've got to have a love for people if you if you're touchy or judgmental or uh, critical of people or upset because people in your family are critical of you you if you get like that you're going to make the gospel more complex you need to be loving to people keep it simple focus on Christ secondly proclaiming the gospel that it's to all people and uh, not just to the elect that God has a love for all people and so again we have this mystery of election but yet this love for everybody and you know be careful of your logic there if you want to read a good paper by John Murray a great theologian uh, on the free offer of the gospel have a read of that paper and it it talks about the love of God and electing love of God and then the challenge of the gospel don't be discouraged if people don't come to know the Lord the Lord will save people but people will reject it and don't be discouraged by that uh, C.S. Spurgeon says let each of us as we have done nothing for Christ begin to do something more so he's talking about proclaiming the gospel that we need to do more evangelism more outreach uh, 2 Corinthians 5 6 13 I would so ever bring one sinner to Jesus Christ then uh, what sorry one writer says Spurgeon says I would sooner bring one sinner to Jesus Christ than uh, unravel the mysteries of div the divine word that's C.H. Spurgeon and if we read 2 Corinthians 5 if we've got time 2 Corinthians 5 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 6 6 to 13 but verse 14 for the love of Christ constrain us because we judge that if one die for all then we're all dead and he says the love of Christ constrains us so the free offer of the gospel is don't make it complex keep it simple remember that God believing in election doesn't mean to say that we don't love people or that God doesn't love people uh, we're to spread the gospel to everybody and have that love for everybody and Jesus showed that when he went oh Jerusalem Jerusalem and it's a mystery you try to bring it down to your puny logic you're going to get in a mess 
Uh, Lloyd Jones, Calvin, and John Murray have all said that on that passage. And then the next thing is to remember that um, don't get, get discouraged if people don't come to know the Lord. Uh, you know, even if they don't come to know the Lord, the gospel is still doing its work. It either judges and condemns or it blesses. And if a whole city reject the gospel, that's success because it, on judgment day, they'll be brought to account for that. So the gospel is being successful whether people accept it or not. So be encouraged. Let's close it, prayer. Father, this is a difficult topic, election and the free offer of the gospel. And we don't want to argue and uh, condemn our brothers and sisters who are Calvinist, Arminian or whatever, Lord. We, we love each one. But Lord, we, we just have to follow the Bible and we just pray that as we follow the Bible, we obey it and we have that love for people. But Lord, we believe that you are powerful, you are sovereign and you can convict people and bring people to a knowledge of you. So Lord, help us to have that love for people. Help us to have a, a caring attitude. But Lord, we pray, uh, may we trust in you and in your power to save people. And so Lord, we thank you for this day and for your love and grace. Bless my brothers and sisters today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Don't forget my website, jasonbirdspreacher.com. Don't forget sermon audio, sermon index, and those are good places to listen to good sermons. God bless you and take care from you.